Hi everyone, it's me Dr. Muhammad Shweb. In this lecture, we will learn how to prepare nanomaterials. Generally, there are two techniques. These are called as top-down approach in which macro material or bulk material is converted into nanometer size. These can be physical or the chemical ones. Uh, second technique is the bottom up technique. It is the chemical technique in it atoms or molecules are joined to form nanomaterials or clusters. The diagram is shown here. So the methods, apart from the techniques, there are different methods which are the physical methods, chemical methods, biological methods and a microwave method. Microwave method can be chemical method. Here are different subclassifications or different examples of chemical methods and biological method, microwave approach and the physical method. What are the desired objectives of a method to produce nanomaterials? That is, the synthetic method should be reproducible by using that method again and again. The size of the nanomaterial should be same or reproducible. And the method should produce monodispersed nanomaterials or particles. And these materials must be defects free. And the essential one, which is applied to the everything or every material or every process, that is, it should be cheap and environmental friendly. First one is top-down approach that is starting from the bulk material and scaling it down to the nanometer dimension. And mostly it is done by the physical breaking through high energy process that is mechanical milling or laser ablation method or arc discharge methods. Mechanical milling in it, bulk material is ground down to the nanoscale with strong mechanical forces applied by the milling technique. This type of method has great acceptability at industrial level where a large quantity of nanomaterial is required. It has other characteristics of simplicity, versatility, scalability and low cost. It can be further subdivided into shaker mills, planetary ball mills and attention mills. Basically, these are the some modification in mechanical milling method. In the ball milling, here are the refractory or steel balls. Here it is the material which is to be converted at the nanometer size. The energy is imparted from these steel bars to the sample or the material which is here. The collision produces the energy which is which converts this material in the nanomaterial side. Then here is the planetary ball mills. It can be of different shapes or types here or here it is shown. These are the vials or the containers. It has the material which is to be converted into the nanomaterial or nanocrystalloid. These vials are attached to a rotating disc. Here it is the rotating disc which is rotated several thousands rounds per minute and grind the material down to the smaller size. 
It is very popular and it can be used to grind several material at a time. As one ball mill can contain several container or oils in which different materials can be converted at the same time. Then here is the shaker mill. The sample is attached to the shaker and energetically swung back and forth for several thousand cycles per minute. Thus the material is converted by physical process or by using energy into nanomaterial. Then here is the laser ablation. Removing of a material from the solid surface by irradiating it with laser beam. It is a material which is to be converted into nanomaterial size. Here it is a laser beam. Laser beam imparts energy to it and it is converted into nanomaterial. High energy at start produces plasma on the surface which separate its fragments as nanoparticles. As the nanoparticles when these are formed they are highly reactive, uh, their surface energies are high, so they are coagulated. So, a liquid flow is necessary so that the materials are formed and these flow in a liquid so that there is no coagulation. Silver or copper or gold can be converted into its nanoparticles by using laser ablation method. Then here is another method which applies energy that is arc discharge method. The material which is to be converted is placed here. When it, it is powered on, here, here the spark produces high energy and the material is converted in, in, into its nanoparticles. Then the second one is bottom-up approach. A bottom-up approach is the one which we see in the nature, even the humans and the living things grow by the bottom-up approach. It is a building up of a material from the bottom that is atom by atom, molecules by molecules or cluster by cluster. Remember that the size of atoms is 0.2 nanometer. Even the chemistry and biology can help to assemble and control growth. What are the advantages of it? Here are the less defects as the energy use is lower, it is more homogeneous, more reproducible uh, as the size and shape of nanomaterials can be controlled and the good quality of nanoparticles can be prepared and the next we will see that the mesoporous materials, nanoporous materials can be prepared by this method and the different types of sheets and tubes can be prepared by the chemical methods or by the in fact by bottom-up approach here are the chemical methods let's see these one by one first one is soul gel method it is a wet chemical method as the name shows soul and gel first of all a solution is made which is called as sole, the precursor are dissolved in some suitable solvent and sometimes stirred to form a sole. Then this sole is which is usually the inorganic metal salts or sometimes metal alkoxides. Then this sole is converted into gel by using different acidic or basic conditions then the, and finally this gel is dried to get the required nanomaterial. It is soul gel method. This method shows the formation of silica nanoparticle. First one is 
alkoxide silica alkoxide usually tetra ethoxy or the silicate is used in the presence of water and alcohol and acid condition it is hydrolyzed to silanols then these silanols are condensed to produce silica nanoparticles actually this is gel and this gel is further dried to obtain the powder form of silica nanoparticles here is a reduction method it is the same as that of the preparation of colloids actually the uh, nanomaterials are the colloidal particles basically so the metal salts is reduced by using some reducing agents as i have told earlier that the nanomaterials are coagulated to form a bigger particle so there there are some capping agent which inhibit the coagulation of these nanoparticles into the bigger or bulk material different metal salts can be used that chlorides or nitrates or sulfates and the reducing agents are usually sodium citrate ascorbic acid sodium borohydride there are a lot of different reducing agents and then there are capping agents which are thiol citrate or uh, mostly polymers such as polyvinyl alcohols are used reduction method here is example reduction method are colloidal synthesis for example highly stable gold particles can be produced by reducing chloroauric acid um, by using a uh, tri sodium citrate here is the equation it produces gold nanoparticles by reduction method then here is another colloidal synthesis which is a solution precipitation uh, metal salts such as chlorides or nitrate nitrides are are dissolved in water uh, these metal cations exist in the form of metal hydrates such as hydrates of aluminium or iron and in the presence of base such as ammonium hydroxide these hydrolyzed species condensed to a gel or a colloidal type substances which is washed filtered dried and calcined calcined mean to heat it at very high temperature so that the water or other organic and inorganic moieties are decomposed and pure metal or metal oxide nanoparticles are obtained here is the diagrammatical representation of the preparation of fe3o4 that is magnetite nanoparticles for this purpose ferrous chloride and ferric chloride solutions are prepared and when ammonia is added drop wise magnetite fe3o4 nanoparticles are produced these particles are super paramagnetic this method is very easier and simpler ones and a high purity nanoparticles can also be produced by this method these particles are magnetic so they can be separated by using a simple magnet in the lab then there is co-precipitation method the first one is formation of zinc sulfide zinc sulfide when it reacts with hydrogen sulfide the zinc sulfide nanoparticles are produced which is dispersed in the media then there are formation of zinc oxide nanoparticle when zinc nitrate is reacted with sodium hydroxide zinc hydroxide is produced which, which when calcined it gives the zinc oxide nanoparticles then there is a solvothermal or hydrothermal as the name shows if some other solvent is used then it is called as solvothermal and if water is used instead of the solvent that the process is known as hydrothermal synthesis here the molecular level precursor are dissolved in the solvent and the reaction is carried out in a closed vessel at high temperature and pressure uh, that the precursor is decomposed by chemical reaction to uh, produce the required nanoparticle 
nitrate is silver nitrate in the presence of sodium acetate and uh, in the presence of iodine it is converted into silver nanoparticles then is the thermolysis as the name shows um, breaking by using temperature that is the decomposing solids or liquids at high temperatures having metal cations or molecular anions or metal organic compound for example lithium nitride when it is heated at 370 degrees centigrade it releases nitrogen and the remaining mass is the nanoparticles of lithium actually in star the lithium atoms are formed which are coagulated or which are merged or combined to form colloidal lithium which are the called which are called as nanoparticles of lithium by using this method very small soils that is lesser than 5 nanometer nanoparticles of lithium can be obtained another method is flame spray pyrolysis or the flame synthesis method in this method an aqueous metal salt solution is sprayed as a fine mist as shown here through a capillary and the small droplets are formed while the solvent burns inside the flame as shown here the conversion of the salt into the metal oxide occurs upon the pyrolysis reaction and the metal oxide aggregates into nanoparticle which are then collected on a substrate then here it is a sono chemical method uh, sono chemical as the name shows that it uses the ultrasonic waves here it is a sonicator here it is a probe this probe is dipped in the solution of the precursor when it is switched on the ultrasonics are produced by this a probe and the this solution is converted into colloidal solution or colloidal nanoparticles here it is an example of mesopause titanium here it is an example of sono and photochemical deposition of noble metal nanoparticles for example on titanium gold nanoparticles are deposited by using this sono chemical or for and photochemical method here it is an other uh, diagram of sonicator here it is a tub in it uh, the solution which is to which is to be converted into the nano material is placed in a beaker or a flask and it produces ultrasound ultrasonics and which converts the precursor into the nano materials here here the sono chemical synthesis is given in detail here it is a sonicator the probe of sonicator here the the red color bubbles are of the precursor molecules this uh, sonicator produces cavitation bubbles and these particles are arranged on the outer surface of the bubble when bubble grow up and it reaches an unstable size and then the nanoparticles are produced when the bubble burst up here is another very efficient and a quick method which is called as microwave assisted synthesis this method combines the advantages of speed and homogeneity of the precursor material microwave irradiation has a penetration characteristic which makes it possible to homogeneously heat up the re reaction solution the result is a uniform nucleation and rapid crystal growth which lead to the formation of crystalloid that has narrow size distribution we can say that we can control the size of nano material that is this method is more reproducible compared to the other conventional method synthesis by microwave irradiation has advantage of short time of reaction which is ascribed to the combined forces 
created by both electric and magnetic component of the microwave that generate friction and collision of molecule. Here is lead dithiocarbamate. First of all, it is sonicated in diethyl diamine, sorry, ethylene diamine, and when heated in a microwave, lead sulfide nanoparticles are produced. It is a very quicker and a simpler method. Here is another method to produce silica nanoparticles. Apart from nanoparticles, nanorods are other shapes of nanomaterials. Here is an other nanomaterial which is called as thin layer. And so the thin layer formation by chemical vapor deposition. There are a lot of methods for the deposition of thin layer formation. But here we will see only the CBD method. This method has wide applications in material processing technology. It is a very simple method. In it, the precursor is vaporized at high temperature and then deposited on the surface of the substrate due to the reaction with the hot surface and thus forms a thin layer on the surface. Here it is a wafer, silicone wafers and upon it zinc oxide nanoparticles uh, in fact zinc oxide layer has to be deposited inert atmosphere of nitrogen and air inlets are shown here it is a furnace which keeps this surface hot it is used in producing bulk materials and powders with high purity Deposition of material on the surface and development of composite material via infiltration technique. The chemical vapor deposition is also used in field of semiconductor and producing synthetic diamonds. Here it is a biological method. In biological method, different materials or plant extracts are used. Actually, these plant extracts are used as a reducing agent. As the diagram shows, here is a metal salt solution. Uh, it, it, this solution can be of gold, silver, copper, or zinc, etc. When a plant extract is used, this uh, net salt solution is converted into nanoparticles. This method is a very important one and is and has high value with respect to the research work and it is called as green synthesis as no harmful or dangerous chemicals are used so it is very environmental friendly apart from using plant extract here is another biological method which is the use of microorganisms for the preparation of nanoparticles as shown here different microorganisms such as fungi algae or bacteria or yeast can be used for this purpose the metal salt is reduced by the use of microorganisms and in this method different processing parameters can be controlled that is incubation period or mixing ratio temperature ph and aeration these parameters can be controlled to obtain the desired size of nanoparticles. Furthermore, their morphology can also be controlled as shown here. These particles can be square, spherical, triangular, hexagonal and rod shape. That's all about the synthesis or preparation of nanomaterials. Thank you.